for today's tip, I wanted to talk about arrow selection and hunting. For more technical information and bow hunting information in general, head over to Eastman's Life of a Bow Hunter podcast. It's a podcast with myself and Brian Barney. We geek out about bow hunting and all things archery. It's a great podcast. Some of the best conversations I've ever had on any podcast are with Brian. And so if you like this techie stuff, and if you just like bow hunting in general, make sure you check out Eastman's Life of a Bow Hunter. Now, for most hunting that I do, I have like an all around arrow that I like to go with as far as weight goes. And that's what I pay attention to the most is what is my final weight going to be? That's what I care about, number one. And up there with number one, too, is components. Your arrow is only as good as your components. You don't want to shoot cheap components. And what I mean by that is your insert, oversert, or the combination between the two. I like small diameter arrows just because they're more tough. Smaller the arrow, the thicker the wall that they have to, to make that grains per inch to keep that GPI up. So you have a thicker wall arrow. They're going to be a lot more stiff and they, they just break a lot less with these smaller diameter arrows. There's theories out there, they penetrate better, they cut the wind better, maybe, probably. Is it measurable? I don't know. But I do like the small diameter size arrows. These are 203 diameter, so these are not a micro diameter arrow, but they're like darn close. They're, they're, co they're considered a micro, but they're not like the smallest diameter micro that you can get. But they have a great insert oversert system, which is what I really like about them super tough shot animals with them they never they never fail other air arrows that are you know a, a small diameter and then the standard size diameter arrows i've had those inserts fail i've busted carbon they just aren't as tough so that's the first thing i look for right after factoring in you know what my total arrow weight's going to be and that usually comes out to like an arrow that's nine to 11 grains per inch is the range that I'm going to like to use. So I look at that on the website and I can see, okay, it's a 10 GPI. That's, you know, about ballpark. ballpark. Uh, that's gonna put me right around the 450 to 460 grain total arrow. Once you factor in the veins and your components and your tip and your knock and all the other stuff. So, and your wrap, you know, an arrow wrap weighs five grains too. So depending on how big it is. Uh, all that weight adds up, so you got to to really factor that in. So the G5 Stacks is a, a cheaper arrow. I wouldn't call it an economy arrow, but it's your standard like straight carbon. Uh, nothing too fancy about the carbon build, but it's very straight. Uh, 1,000 straightness factor, so very straight. The mark is also a 1,000 straightness factor, but it has like multiple layers and the carbon weave. So that's what you're paying for is a stiff, a, a stronger arrow. Uh, just how that carbon is woven upon multiple layers, it's going to be stronger and that's why it's a little bit more expensive as well. But the difference is, is the mark weighs more. So this is 35 grains more than the stack. So these are both 28 inches of carbon with the same components and the only difference is this is a four fletch and so this is six grains heavier because of the four fletch. And so the stacks with a three fletch weighs 443 grains. The mark with a four fletch weighs 470 grains. So with three fletches, this would be 471 grains. So we're talking 30-ish grains difference. Now, it doesn't sound like a lot, but 30 grains makes a big difference in speed. This arrow is 10 feet per second slower than this arrow because it's 30 grains heavier. So I'm getting less speed, but the bow is quieter because it's a heavier arrow. It soaks up more of the energy, kind of gets rid of the string noise. So there's trade-offs. Archery is a world of trade-offs, and that's what you have to factor in on what trade-offs do you want to deal with with your setup. Now for me, I shoot a vertical sliding sight. And this is a three pin vertical. This is the dialed Arxos, but it's a three pin vertical. And I like my trajectory to be a little bit more flat than 
a big aggressive arc of a heavy arrow because I do use a little bit of Kentucky windage. And what I mean by that is when I hunt, my sight stays set at 30 yards. And at 30 yards, I'm about two inches high at 20 and I'm about six inches low at 40. And this 443 grain arrow, I believe for me, is a good balance in between, you know, a, a good medium weight arrow. It's, it's heavy enough that it does keep my bow quietish, but it also keeps my speeds down too. When I look for my speeds, I believe a 290 to 300 feet per second arrow is about maximum for what I want. And with those speeds, that keeps my trajectory a little bit more flat. So when I do have to Kentucky windage for those, uh, for those shots that I don't have time to dial, that are within 40, that I'm not gonna dial anyway. It just gives me more room for error because my arrow is shooting flatter. Now, if I was shooting a 477 or maybe a 500 grain arrow, my trajectory is gonna be a, a lot more dramatic. At 40 yards, I bet I'm 10 inches low with a 480 grain arrow. At 20 yards, I bet I'm still two inches high, but it's just gonna drop off faster. And with a vertical pin, I just like a little bit flatter trajectory. So once again, I like to be in between 440 to 450 grains for most of my bow hunting. Now we're very lucky in this day and age with these modern bows. They're so much faster and so much more efficient than the bows that we shot 20 years ago. And so we have so much more power. With this arrow setup, I'm at 90 to 93 foot pounds of kinetic energy, which is well above the eastern charts of what is deemed necessary to hunt like the heaviest bone game like a cape buffalo or a yukon moose or an american bison they say that you need about 69 to 70 foot pounds for those animals so i have a lot of energy to play with and a lot of extra energy that is probably not going to be used to its full potential but there's all these factors, right, depending on the species of animals that you're hunting. Now, I like to have a heavier arrow for elk. They're a bigger bodied animal, and I think you should too. Like, have, shoot a little bit heavier of an arrow and slow that bow down a little bit and have a, a nice quiet bow, but an arrow that's gonna penetrate. On the flip side, maybe like, you know, an axis deer or an antelope. They have a tendency to just be a little bit more quicker on their right. reflexes. And so they, they can jump the string a little bit easier, even with these quieter bows. So for that scenario, I do like to have a little bit lighter of an arrow to have a faster arrow. It gets there just that split second faster. And a lot of times in bow hunting, that's all it takes is just tenths of a, of a second that make all the difference. So I will shoot a little bit lighter of an arrow and maybe get my arrow speed up around 300 feet per second when I'm shooting those jumpier animals or some of the African animals are a little bit just jumpier and a little bit faster of an arrow seems to, to just help with that and they just can't jump the string as effectively. Now the heavier boned animals like the elk and the moose and the bison, those animals don't really tend to jump the string as much. You just don't see it. You know an animal has a higher tendency to jump the string when they're alert and they're locked on or they, they see danger or they're, they're just tuned up elk do duck. Uh, they just, they're just not as fast as some of the smaller animals. So these are the things that I factor in. Ultimately, you have to decide what is right for you for the setup that you have. Maybe you're a 26 inch draw length and you shoot 60 pounds. You're, you're not going to have, you know, the, the luxury of, of really picking an arrow and the luxury of picking an arrow for a faster animal compared to you know, an elk, you don't have the luxury of having all that energy. So you, you need to probably stick with something that's more mid-range so you don't have a terrible trajectory, but a, a mid-weight arrow, and that's probably what you're gonna shoot for everything. But once again, I wanna go back to it. We're really spoiled in 2024 because we have all these options that we can tinker with, and bow hunters are tinkerers. And so, yeah, we, we do have the ability to shoot a couple different types of arrows if you want to and match that arrow to the game and to the style of hunting that you're gonna be shooting. And that might vary if you're a tree stand hunter back east 
or if you're a western big game hunter where you might be shooting a little bit farther distances you know out west 40 50 60 yards is fairly common and back east or tree stand hunting i mean 50 is long 40 to 30 to 20 is probably more common and so that comes into play too and and maybe you're a, a silence freak you like to have the least amount of noise possible and you like to shoot a heavy arrow because of that then shoot a heavy arrow we're like i said we're lucky we have all these different options at our disposal and on top of it we also have the ability to tune these arrows and adjust these based on to our setup and i'm talking about you know our, our spine stiffness when it comes to, to tuning you can cut carbon off to make this arrow stiffer you can leave the, the carbon arrow a little bit longer to have a little bit more of a weaker shaft for tuning. And that is going to add or subtract weight to your total arrow setup as well. So there's all these factors to consider, but ultimately we're very lucky because we have great selections. I have a light arrow and I have a he heavy arrow. So I'm gonna shoot this light arrow at axis deer, at antelope, and then I'm gonna shoot this heavy arrow at elk or if I'm ever lucky enough to draw a moose tag or a bison tag, I would go with a little bit heavy, heavier of an arrow because why not? But ultimately, I do like that 290, 288 to 298 feet per second speed maximum just so I don't get any of that erratic arrow flight at distances. Sometimes with broadheads in hunting scenarios, your form might, may not be perfect, there may be wind, it, that's all it takes. Once you start getting out to 60, 70, 80 yards, your groups are gonna open up a little bit. You're a little less precise when you have those higher speeds. So that's kind of been my findings. Anything under 300 feet per second, I like. And if you have a well-tuned bow, you're, you, don't, you don't really see that many erratic arrows in those less than ideal situations. So as a recap, that's kind of what I go with. You know, heavy arrows are gonna quiet your bow down, but you're gonna have more of a trajectory. Lighter arrows, your bow might be a little bit louder, but you're gonna have a little bit flatter of a trajectory. I like that with a single pin slider sight. And components, that's what I look at when it comes to arrow selection. Good components, a good insert, oversert on that micro diameter arrow super strong components are key, especially on big boned animals. But once again, your arrow is only as good as your components, because if those fail, it doesn't matter what you're shooting for carbon. So hopefully you're able to gain a little bit of insight out of this arrow selection video. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out our Eastman's Hunting Journal's YouTube channel, gear reviews, bow reviews, and of course, Beyond the Grid, a great film series that we have on there. Episodes coming out in July for 2024, super stoked. Anyway, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.